Hi, I'm Scott Koblish. I am a DC comic book artist, and I am not exactly sure how I got here in this void or here with my desk, but uh, since I am here and you're here, I'm going to teach you how to draw Batman. We're going to spend about five episodes doing uh, various heroes and villains in his pantheon, and then in the sixth episode, we're going to spend a little bit of time doing a scene together where Batman and the Joker are fighting in an amusement park. I'm going to have a lot of fun doing this. I hope that you're going to have a lot of fun doing this, and together we're going to spend a little bit of time exploring Batman. One of the things that you can start out with is doing a, a line of action. Basically, what you want to do is you want to set up as gently as you can and with as much patience as you can, just a rough of the character that you want to do. It doesn't have to be um, the final of anything. You just want to sort of set up the general motion of the character and the general action of everything. You want to keep it kind of loose, you want to keep it kind of sweeping, and then what you'll do is you'll take your pencil and you will start to tighten things in. So basically what you're doing here in this set is you're making room for mistakes. You won't want to have to draw in final details at the beginning, and the reason for that is that oftentimes if you think about how you uh, make a meal, or if you think about how you do some exercise, you never start in with the, the heaviest stuff first. You start in so that you can get a rhythm for it, you can get a, a pattern for it. The great thing about uh, drawing in this manner is that it's a little forgiving, so that you don't have to worry about making too many mistakes. What I like to do here at this stage is to just kind of build up the figure. Here's where the head is, you know, here's the line of action for the head, so you can see where Batman is looking. You can see just here, this is the sort of eye line sight. This is the center line that goes down the, in the center of the face. And then you've got the torso. The torso is broken up into a number of different sections. A lot of people like to work on the, the uh, rib cage kind of area first. Um, I find that that's a pretty easy way to do it as well. Um, I sort of rough in the clavicle area. And then you can take from the center line here, you follow your center line through the face. You can follow it down the neck as well and then into the center of the clavicle, down the chest, and then uh, you can get your abdomen lines in. All heroes have pretty um, well-defined abdomens. I don't, but that's okay. Basically what you wanna do is just like follow the form, When I was young, I was taught it's great to think of uh, the body and the arms as cylinders and triangles and trapezoids. It helps you get some sense of drawing around the figure. While this line here won't be visible in the final, it's important to know like what the rest of the figure is doing in a three-dimensional sort of sense. Likewise with the legs, you'll have the sort of defined uh, torso and then you'll have like some musculature that comes off of the torso. And basically what you wanna do is just make sure that um, you're building shapes first. Once you have the um, uh, general shape of the body down, then you can start to refine uh, in here um, the features. I can swoop in the cape a little bit. Um, his Batman's cape is really fascinating because it's got these points and then almost like uh, elliptical kind of um, uh, shape. So it's, it's like there's a point and then there's a fun sort of bounce and uh, I really enjoy doing that. I think that that's a lot of fun. It shows up a little bit in the cape too. The cape is a little scalloped, so that you've got like um, 
some chances to do like uh, some really fun kind of things here. If you keep the fun in it, I find that that's uh, much more important because then people react uh, a lot to like how excited the motion is. This pose for Batman, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have some sort of action. He's leaping, uh, he's sort of jumping into battle. The thing that I want everyone to sort of understand and to, to know moving forward is that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay not to have things in exactly the place that you want them to be the first time that you're drawing them. It's super important to give yourself a little bit of leeway so that you can make mistakes and learn from those mistakes how to correct them. You'll see that uh, as I've drawn the, the belt around here, I tried to make it sort of follow um, what I was talking about before is for as far as following a pattern all the way through. So this belt is a circular kind of thing. When it's on Batman, you can see that it circles all the way around. It's not a line that we'll keep in the end, but it is the line that you want to keep in mind when you're drawing it. Batman's boots are kind of interesting. He has like um, kind of these, uh, they're, they're very thick, kind of segmented, like, um, kind of boots. They start low in the back and they go, they move along with the calf muscle up to the front. Batman's symbol is really interesting. It is a bat, or at least a sort of a stylized bat. Um, the way that I start it is usually I, I do these little two points and then, and then I'll, I'll pick a spot about halfway down the pectoral muscles, and I will draw the bat symbol up to it, the first line up to it, and then have another one that goes, uh, follows along almost uh, uh, horizontally to the pectoral muscle. And then um, you wanna pick a point down here and know that there's, uh, there's one there's one point in between. So you'll do a little scalp line and um, follow it like that. So right now Batman's symbol is pretty much like this. It's changed over time. It does different things. Um, I think that currently the way that Batman's drawn is this way. He has a little uh, double line outside of the symbol. We'll just sort of rough that in. So the moment we get to the inking stage, we'll be a little tighter. But, um, and then of course, this is a, almost a solid black. And I'll take the side of the pencil and just like rough it in that way. Other black shapes on Batman are gonna be where his boots are and we can rough in some, um, some silhouette kind of stuff there. Let's see. Now for Batman's gauntlets. He kind of used to have gloves. It's, uh, that used to go up a little bit to this level here, but they go up a little higher now and they have um, three sort of almost spikes. The thing that I always wind up having trouble with is fitting all three. Um, and you can see what a challenge that can be like. Um, so there we go, that's a little bit more even. I, I wanna try and have all three of these about the same sort of size. And we're gonna work a little bit on the hand shape here. So my advice for drawing hands, you wanna keep it rough at first and you wanna give yourself a little room to make mistakes. The way that I approach hands, especially from this angle, are I've got a bit of a, a pentagram, like a, a five-sided kind of uh, thing going on here uh, that takes into account that uh, down here is going to be the thumb. So if you think of it almost as a constellation of stars, you got one, two, three, four stars here, and then a fifth star here. And then basically you wanna try and work it out so that you're forming the pattern around that. So you build the fingers off of the, uh, the that pentagram that I've built. And uh, the wrist here is uh, where the other end of that pentagram is. All fingers have uh, three joints, a thumb has two. It'll be one here and one here for the thumb. In this hand, if you were to think through, you'd have another like joint here 
and that way you'd be able to sort of put it in here. But we won't be able to see that part, so. You've got a couple things that sort of identify Batman more than others. The cowl, which is over his head, the cape, and the uh, bat symbol. Those are things that are you don't really want to lose track of. You want to make sure that uh, those are the things that you're spending some time on, because those are the things that people recognize more often. At this point uh, here, I am starting to shade in a little bit and give some indication of where I want the uh, shading to be. Batman, when he's in light, um, has these little sort of areas of darkness uh, on his cowl. So this is just an approximation that artists were doing to indicate like, um, that his cowl is a very dark color. It's, it's, a, it's a black shape. The same with his cape, it's a black shape. Um, so, and the same with his uh, gauntlets, gloves, and the fins, and the boots. So, Batman has um, uh, very dark shapes, black on the wrists, on the gauntlets, on his face mask, and cowl, and bat symbol, and uh, boots. What I like to do when I think of these uh, lighting terms is to think in thirds. So if we go from here to here to here, you can see this is about two thirds of the distance. Um, it gives some indication that you've got like a little bit of form and shape to the the, um, the shadow without overwhelming it. Um, same thing would happen over here. So if the light is coming from, let's say this direction uh, and shining on the boot here, you'll have a situation where this side of the boot will be um, left open and this will be in shadow. The cape is pretty fun. It is usually just a very large black mass. And you can see very easily in pencil uh, the difference between the, the forms and the shapes. But as soon as we get to the inking process, we're gonna start to lose a little bit of um, the shape uh, to this. So this will all be black in here. And uh, we're gonna start losing a little bit of um, uh, the form. So what I wanna try and do is make sure that uh, uh, when we're inking it out, that some of those things are more visible. And maybe that we make the fins um, white here on this drawing. And uh, when we draw the black in, we draw it in like that. Now I'm using the side of the pencil uh, for large black areas. If you are inking it yourself, you could even sort of just know in your head that this is going to be the general area. Um, and then it'll be black. Some people put in like a little X just to remind themselves. So I'm using the side of this pencil. The pencil's gotten pretty dull, um, which actually gives me the benefit of uh, being able to do some wider strokes with it. And what I'm gonna do now is switch to a tighter pencil, one that I've sharpened already. And uh, just so I can do a little bit more of the uh, specific work the detail work that I want to try and do next, uh, especially in the face. I work with a number two pencil. I've experimented with different pencils. I think that the thing that I would encourage you to do is try different things for yourself. You'll see that I, I tend to use my eraser quite a bit. Your pencil comes with two spots. It has an eraser on it and it has a, a lead on it. So that's uh, it's important to be able to know how to use both. I want to try and make sure that all the little tiny details are are uh, sort of cemented up here. He has a couple um, different lines that are going on, and almost like um, like things are segmented on the main part of the the costume, um, just in the current version. So these are lines that are. I don't think that they're too necessary because the colorist isn't gonna really change the color based on um, these lines, but they're almost like seams. So my pants have a seam to them. And uh, I think that the way that they have it for Batman right now is that his, his clothes have a seam as well. So 
Uh, one thing that I occasionally will do is to just to see uh, if anything is off. Like I felt that that eye was a little bit too high and off. Okay, that is, as far as the pencils go, I leave it a little bit loose for, um, for the ink to interpret as well. All right, now we are done with the penciling phase. We're gonna switch over to inking. The thing that I like about inking is that um, out of all the mistakes that I've made with a pencil, at this point we're, we're finalizing the drawing. We're sort of saying uh, what gets to stay and what gets to go. It is permanent, but you have white out, you can always fix something. <laughs> So, all right, let's switch to that. Uh, the tool that I am going to use today is a croquill. This is a nib that you essentially put into the inking pen. You go like that, you put the quill in, and um, it's a dip pen. So basically what I'm doing is I'm dipping the ink in here, or dipping the pen into the ink, and then, um, I will be using it to uh, get all sorts of fine details. The thing that you have to remember about inking is that um, you are also doing um, drawing. You're not exactly following everything 100%, but you are following the general shape and um, pattern for the whole thing. I just really enjoy ink. It's, it's, a, it's a really fun like medium. There's a lot of things you can do with it. It's a lot different than pencil. Pencil is a lot more uh, fluid and inking is a lot more um, specific. So when you first start inking, you'll probably wind up where I was at. It just takes a lot of skill um, that you develop over time. I'm sort of spending like time when I'm inking, like just sort of picking and choosing the lines that I want to be there in the end. The reason I'm the paper is meandering around is because uh, in order for me to get the line that I'm trying to get, um, I've have, I have to pull the line. If I were to push, you just can't do it. If I were to push up this way, it like um, it becomes a major problem. But if you pull, it's a very quick, fast line. But uh, but it has to sort of move around as a consequence. So I'm leaving areas that are shaded in for when I get a brush. So some areas like I can just easily fill in with black with this tool, but uh, to really fill in like a lot of the other areas, like um, it would just sort of break this tool. I'll leave the area open here to fill in with black when I get a brush. Uh, to do that with. I think that the, it's very important to be engaged with the work that you're doing. It's especially important in comics because comics are a, uh, are a storyteller's medium. And it's easy to lose sight of that when you're drawing the human figure or you're drawing particular things all day long. But um, you want to try and make sure that, that everything you're doing is in service of the story. As far as trying to figure out like what parts to shade, I enjoy sort of moving around within the picture. It helps me to kind of get some sense that um, I'm seeing the picture as a whole. So sometimes I'll bounce around, like I'll do one glove and then another glove, and or I'll do um, the cape and then a uh, glove, or, you know, feel free to move around and just, uh, Enjoy the process. Just as it's okay to erase, it's okay to focus on different things when you're inking. So what we've done here is uh, we've done a lot of the main detail work with the pen nib that I've got here. And uh, we're gonna take uh, the opportunity to uh, fill in a lot of these black spaces with a brush. We've got some really great brushes here and uh, we're gonna just fill in the area, black, big black areas, and then we'll do a little bit more fine tuning. But uh, we're getting pretty close to the end of our, of our drawing here. 
So the great thing about a brush is that um, you have a lot more control with it than you think you do. It can be pretty daunting to um, start working with a brush, but the thing that you have to remember is that the brush is your friend. There's a particular kind of um, a thing that happens when the amount of ink uh, sort of leaves the brush. Um, and uh, we call that a dry brush effect. And um, I'll try and do some here. Um, but you can see as it starts to, as it starts to lose um, the ink, it can, it creates this sort of almost gray that you can build. So what I'm gonna do here is, um, I'm gonna explore that, I'm gonna, you know, try and make it so that I can show like one of the things that you can do with a brush is this this really neat like sort of effect. And I find that a little bit uh, goes a long way. We're only gonna do a little bit of dry brush here in the, just in the cape and um, leave it at that. With a brush, you can cover a much uh, wider area in a faster amount of time. If I were to try and fill this in with a, a pen or a marker, it would take, I think, a little bit longer. You get different things out of pulling um, the ink. Like, for instance, uh, if I were to take the brush and push it, like, you get a different kind of, like, mark than you would if you were, like, doing it, like, pulling it, you know? So there's, um, brushes are a little finicky. Um, it's worth it to, to, to use them though. You get different things out of it. So I'm gonna switch over to doing a little bit of uh, fine detail stuff with uh, just a small pen that I have here. And then we'll be done, I think. With this pen, I can kind of like tighten some things up and any extra details that I wanna add, I can add in this part of the process. Again, you're always free to continue. Um, correcting or, um, you know, adding a few things, you know. I find that a drawing is very rarely ever f completely finished, but uh, at some point you have to have the bravery to put it down. One thing that you can do with a pen uh, is you can kind of get um, really interesting uh, shading out of it. Um, almost, I try and do a little bit of cross hatching which is uh, taking the the um, the pen and going uh, counter to um, something. So let's say I'll start drawing one line. I'll draw a feathered sort of um, another line at like a 45 degree angle, or you know, um, just to sort of give it a little bit of shape, a little bit of a sense of um, thinking around the image thinking around the figure, um, giving something weight without uh, obliterating the, the, the shape underneath. Because um, you'll see that the black, while it does help to form things out, it does tend to flatten um, out the form. So, uh, so it helps to be able to just go in and uh, add a little bit of um, texture, a um, little bit of form, so. And it also helps to sort of, if there's any like um, little uh, details that uh, kind of need to be fixed up, you can do it at this stage as well. Um, I think that there's a few seams on Batman's outfit here. Okay, here we go. So, that's Batman. He's a lot of fun. Next, uh, there's gonna be a color aspect to it. 
They're gonna come in with a focus on lighting and shading, really just make that figure pop out. I really enjoyed drawing with you today, and if you did too, you can join us for some of the other episodes of How to Draw the DC Multiverse. In addition, you can check out my book, How to Draw DC, for more of an in-depth process on how to draw Batman, superheroes, and supervillains. Until next time, I'm Scott Koblish, and I look forward to drawing with you again soon. Now, now how do I get out of here? Maybe I don't. <laughs>